I shit you not, dude. Like it is butt to butt fucking stars fans and I'm the one fan in the in the stairwell that's wearing crack and shit. And I'm like, can I get a crack and bang? <laughs> <laughs> like at the top of my lungs. And everyone's like, Bo <laughs> It was so bad. Dude. And I'm like, oh let me see that video. Let me see that video. I gotta post this. Didn't film it. New shit. Yeah. Yeah, she fumbled the bag. Yeah, we gotta be better. Yeah, she fumbled the we bag. We gotta be better, when dude. I let her hear it after that. I was like, you made me fucking do that shit. <laughs> and didn't get enough film. And you didn't film it, dude. You almost got your teeth knocked out in fucking Star yeah. Stadium. Welcome back to another episode live from the dojo. Happy Cinco de Mayo. You can get this podcast here. We get podcasts. That's our podcast, Spotify, and the YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Big day. I feel like we need to get some margaritas. Maybe we some do. tacos. We do. Maybe a burrito. Very down. We should. This Gotta is getting filmed good. on Thursday, though. So we're trying to bring the Cinco de Mayo vibes. <laughs> um, the Los Angeles Angels completed what I would like to call one of the hornier comebacks I've been involved with this year. Angels are a wagon. Are they? <laughs> they're getting hot. They're getting hot. I mean, they're in a division that's not nearly as good as they probably should be. Rangers right now are in first place in that division. So I'm going to be rooting on the Rangers' downfall, you know, rest of the season, to oh, be it's honest. It's the hometown team, though. I know. I know. But uh, Angels are my hometown team. However, Astros are pretty mid. Oakland, Oakland A's are fucking pathetic. And uh, and the Mariners are also underperforming tremendously. So the Angels could be making some noise. Shohei might be staying in Orange County. Dude, and it's funny because we're watching that game, or I'm watching that game. We're obviously watching in separate places. The Cardinals are pretty much the worst team in baseball right now other than the A's, I feel like. The third worst team. Third worst team. Who's the second? Royals. Oh, uh, the Kansas City Royals. They are the worst, worst in the National League, though. Worst in the National League. Yeah. And we're sitting there sweating. Shohei's gone, dude. No, no, he's, he's gone, yeah, dude. Yeah, that game, he's gone. He's gone, dude. I mean, it was kind of, he gave up some Turks. He gave up some Turks. But he did have 13 strikeouts. I saw he became the first, yeah, that's absurd. first player since Babe Ruth to have 100 bombs and 500 strikeouts, I think it was. But I will say nothing feels better than when you're down. And Mike Trout steps up in a tie game, and you're like, dude, he Don't you might love? just, dude, he might just. It's so great when he actually clutches up, because no, there's so crazy. many times where he doesn't. <laughs> like, I know Mike Trout's the goat and shit, but like, god damn, bro. I feel like it's like pulling teeth, trying to get him to come up in the clutch, and he hit a bomb. Back-to-back -back bombs. Almost went back-to-back-to-back -back -back bombs. Shohei hit the wall. Dude, I love that was it. absurd. Well, I wasn't actually watching. Were you, did it hit the wall? No, yeah, apparently, yeah, it hit the wall. Because <sighs> I was on stream saying, here comes our... It was a deep shot, dude. They've done it before, back to back to back, <laughs> and I really needed a Shohei bomb for the goat whale. And of course, triple digit exit velo, 115 line drive. Dude, and I was getting ready to chalk it because I was sitting there going, dude, there's no way we're about to lose to the Cardinals, bro. Like, so of, I was like, top of the order... But, like, there's no way. Like, I took the Angels, like, as favorites today, and they're going to fucking lose to the Cardinals. Yeah, I know. And then it was like, ding dong. Yeah. Like, we we have a tie ball game here. And then it was like, Mike Trout was up. I was like, no, there's no way. This guy came there's on, no way. This guy came on stream yesterday and was shitting on the entire stream about how the stream just can't bet on baseball. Like, they don't know how to read the lines. Uh, people who come on stream are just squares, have no idea, like, how to read baseball lines and use knowledge you know based on prior matchups and shit whatever just basically discrediting anyone who comes on stream and gives a baseball play and then he gives a baseball play uh -oh. and it was the under in the angels game <laughs> that was sharp had, had all these sharp reads and shit and they scored 10 runs and no was, that was sharp <laughs> as soon as he ended on the stream i was like chad this could be a fucking fan <laughs> And sure enough, it's soared over. I love uh, like shit on other people and then give something out and just completely sell. Like, yeah, that, that's or, the best. Or yesterday, someone came on and goes, Oilers, free. I knew right dead. Then. I knew right oh then. Oh my God, dead. Dead. Not one VGK was pitched. 95% of the people on Picket were on Oilers, but the lines of pick them, like, that's the exact same shit as what the cracking game I went to was like, which, by the way, I, got, I want to talk about that. 
that Kraken Stars game I went to, mm. I've never been in a building like I was in that night. I was looking around. I couldn't find a single Kraken fan. I saw a couple like walking in as we were getting to our seats and shit. And like we'd dab up, you know, because it's rare to see a Kraken fan. <laughs> in the wild. In the wild in Dallas. Uh, you know, new ex- uh, expansion team, right? Already pretty small fan base. Yeah, you went to game one. Yeah, I went yeah, to game okay. one. Um, <clears throat> stars get on the board quick. That place is rocking. I'm in moose shit, you know. There's not a single Kraken fan. Everyone's looking at me, booing and shit. Kraken come out of nowhere. Nowhere. Dude. Score three goals. Four goals in the first period. And that place was dead fucking silent for the next period and a half because not a single goal was scored for literally a period and a half of hockey. Then we get to the third period. I knew it was going to overtime. Every Stars game I've been to, it's been an overtime loss for the Stars this year, which is insane. Four games. We went with, we went together with the Devils game, Jack Hughes and OT. We went to the Sabres game with Shelly, Tage Thompson and OT. Went to a Jets game early in the year and then the night the other night. All four overtime losses. But we get to overtime in that Stars game against the Kraken. And, dude, first of all, Shelly's sweating out his 10-rack entry for oh, one. Oh, yeah, with Robo. One more Robo SOG, which was just absolute moose <laughs> shit. This dude had three SOGs with a period left to play and overtime and was nowhere to be found to get that fourth SOG. Nowhere. Uh, but that's like why I think they, they lost. But where I'm going with this is we get to overtime and dude, the crack and bang. I stand up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, you could literally hear my scream from outside the building, man. There was not a single soul saying shit. And then... The Kraken uh, players probably heard you. They're dude, like, oh, we got one here. For real, dude. It was I, like, I'm literally, I'm in Chase Breedlove section, which was like all season ticket Die stars hard, holders, yeah. you know? So I'm definitely the only one in this section. Uh, but we're walking out of the stadium and like Katie and I are like, she goes, what are the odds you, we're in the stairwell, right? And it's all stars fans. I'm the one Kraken fan in the stairwell uh, trying to leave the building. And she goes, what are the odds you, you know, try to start a Kraken chant right now? I'm like, one to five. We both say four. Oh. Classic. So I'm like, fuck, dude. So I'm like, all right, film this for me. <laughs> I shit you not, dude. Like, it is butt to butt fucking Stars fans, and I'm the one fan in the, in the stairwell that's wearing crack and shit. And I'm like, can I get a crack and bang? <laughs> <laughs> like, at the top of my lungs. And everyone's like, boo! <laughs> It was so bad. Dude. And I'm like, oh, let me see that video. Let me see that video. I got to post this. Didn't film it. New shit. Yeah. Yeah, she fumbled the bag. Yeah, we got to be better. Yeah, she fumbled the we bag. We got to be better, dude. I let her hear it after that. I was like, you made me fucking do that shit. <laughs> I didn't get enough film. And you didn't film it, dude. You almost got your teeth knocked out in fucking Star yeah. Stadium. I thought you were going to be like, let's go Kraken, but can I get a Kraken bang? Yeah. It's way more yeah. disrespectful. So disrespectful. <laughs> Imagine like a Stars fan, they already like play the game too late. So you're probably leaving the stadium at like midnight. Like it was close like 1230. Two, it was, yeah. Yeah, dude. And people are like pissed. They got work in the morning and you just hear some like bozo kid go, can I get a Kraken bang? <laughs> I literally want to kill you. I literally want to kill you. Joe Pavelski with four <laughs> random goals in that game. Yeah. And, and I was sweating. I didn't have a rack on my entry, but I was sweating Tyler Sagan to have one more SOG and he was on Robo's line and yeah. they just didn't sniff the ice. No, I don't I, understand. I don't, I still can't wrap my head around it. You got your best player not on the floor. Like, I, like I, I don't get it. That's like not having Kyrie in the game with the fucking, what an odd player to pick, but he was, <laughs> but he was also only, they were only getting like, 10 seconds a shift. Yeah. Someone had to be tired in that three. I don't know. It might have been Robo, dude. I have no idea. But Shelly losing 10 racks on that. Th- going into the third period, I'm like, wow, he's just won 10K. <laughs> like, that's insane, dude. I'm sweating it for him. I'm watching the stream, like, at the game. <laughs> dude, and, like, I was, I was some, uh, like, because I knew that was happening. I tuned into to his stream for, like, the last, for, like, the overtime. So I didn't have the game on. I'm just watching it through Chelly's stream, and it was just getting like worse and worse in terms of his energy. Just being like, he's not even getting on the ice, guys. Yeah, Chad, he's not even getting on the ice. 
And then you just see the chat fill with bang, 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 And I was like, and I was, no, no, and I was like, oh shit, he got it. And Shelly's like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And then you just see the little score bug change, like crack at five four. And I was like, no, no, dude. That's so brutal, man. So brutal. Um, how does Vegas know? How do they know? In what world does the MVP come back? And the line stays at minus eight. That's how I knew it was going to be a dig down for the. But how do they know, dude? A minus ten, they lose outright. The MVP of the NBA season comes back, and it stays at a minus eight. I mean, I do again. The trend of the team winning outright covers—it's insane, you know. So I think you either take the spread or you take Sixers ML. And I was like, uh, what has a better shot of happening? the Celtics bouncing back or the Sixers going up 2-0 in Boston. But it wasn't even a likely bounce back. Uh, like Jason Tatum almost fouled out. He didn't even I don't even think he had double digit points. No, he had 7. I took his over. <laughs> but he didn't like he didn't even have double digit points. Don't take his over anymore. I'm telling you it never hits. Well, I was just like, "All right, bounce back. Like you just got bitched out in your own arena. Maybe you come out and do something." It was a weird game. Like no one went over their points except the usual suspects. Jalen Brown um, and Marcus Smart did. Brown pushed. I got He pushed. I thought it was a 20 20- Yeah. They bumped that shit. I know. I know. Um, like Brogdon and Derek White. Derek White are like the two that finally had two green game. goblins that continue to turn green. I think Brogdon's gone over points. I think someone said last night, 10 straight games. No, he's been automatic. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why we haven't been on that. I know. I know. Because I don't want to bet on Brogdon. I right? I'm weird like that. Though. I know, dude. There's guys that just like. Ah. You know what I mean, like Derek White. I, I don't want to look at my slip and be like, "Got any Brogdon to shoot the ball?" Facts, you know bro. what I'm saying? Yes, this is gross. Like that's why we do the. We have a Discord for for Book It Sports. If you guys didn't know, like go check it out. But we do every Thursday. We do a Book It Team Prize Picks entry. You might as well fade it at this point because we have maybe got one to two legs right on every single one. Maybe one to two. Yeah. Last one, I was the only one that got a leg the right. Only one, but. We do these like book it um, Discord uh, prize picks entries where we cook in, in the voice channel. And it's all the book creators. It's like Krabs, me, Trent, Shelly, Lauren, um, Javon, everybody everybody comes in and, and contributes to Square. And Trent was like, Mike's, because I tried to pitch like a sharp play. It wasn't like a sharp play, but it just wasn't like a guy that I'd normally bet on. And Trent was like, nah, man. I'm out. I was like, what do you mean you're out? out. He was like, no, you're only good for like the Tatums, like the Currys. And like, (laughs) that's because like I pick their nights, but because it's guys I want to watch. Like my prize pick centers are always like the best guys on the floor of the ice. um, Or sometimes like a good role player because that's, I'd rather watch that than sit there. Like I honestly hate, not the way Krabs bets, but I just couldn't do it. I can't sit there ugly betting. Like I can't. I can't either. I can't sit there rooting for like, Fucking, let me think of a player real quick. I can't sit there rooting for Brogdon over 10 and a half points. Like, I just can't. Yeah. Like, that's not, not something I want to watch the game for. You know what I mean? And I bet what I want to watch a lot of the time that fits a narrative that I think is going to hit or the stats that I think is going to hit. But, like, I just can't. Dude, I can't bet ugly because I don't think it's fun. I feel like you specialize in, like, like Marcus Smart role players. Dude, love those. I yeah. took them last night yeah. privately, and it fucking smart. Yeah, like, that's one that continues to turn green, too. Dude, green. And that one was, like, if they're going to win and cover eight, he has to drive the boat, and he drove the boat. Whenever he drives the boat and the role players, like, play well, when he's hitting shots, they win. If you yeah. don't even know that. Yeah. Like, he was banging, like, cr- like clutch-ass threes. And then that opens up the pressure for, like, Derek White to hit a corner three because now Marcus Smart gets the ball at the top of the key, and now you have to press him. But when he's off, you don't have to press him. So it opens up the floor more when he's making shots. But, yeah, I love him. He His points, rebounds, and assists was at 20 and a half. That was, like, air. I was yeah, like breathing it in last night. Again, the million dollar entry comes nowhere close. We got to be better, man. What did they have? I didn't even see it last dude, night. Dude, they're trying like six fucking plays in the same game. It's I like, hate it's that, not dude. Gonna work. I hate like that they, one of them, the, she did have dry style last night, which was good. I mean, I can't. I mean, we'll talk about the Oilers once you're done telling me what was in the entry. But uh, it was like Tatum over, Brown over, and bead under. Like and bead unders yesterday were fucking free as shit too. You're telling me that there was a combo square of Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel shots, and she didn't put it in it. <laughs> did it hit? Yeah, dude. How many shots? They had ten combined. It really? was like seven and a half. Wow, that was air. The air, dude. Air, <laughs> like air. Let me see what she had. 
Jalen Brown points, rebounds, and assists over. Joel Embiid points, rebounds, and assists over. Didn't even come close. Dry Settle shots hit. He had four goals. Riley Smith shots. I don't know if that hit. James Harden assists. Don't think it hit. Didn't hit. Jason Tatum points, rebounds, and assists. I don't even think came close. Not even. Not like, even. I don't even like that entry looking at it. Yeah. I knew right away. I told you. I told the stream yesterday. That shit's not hitting. I think Price Pick should give us a chance with the last one they do yeah. for us to try to hit it. I think they should give us a shot. I think one shot. Dude. One shot. One shot. <laughs> I have one, one shot, shot every day. I can't do it. <laughs> but if you knew a mill was on the line? Uh, I don't know what would change. I'm still uh, pretending like a fuck ton of money's on the line because well, it is. What would change is you'd get 30 minutes of glory. You'd have to lock it. Have to lock it. Do you get 30 or do you get an hour? You get an, an hour? hour? Oh, you, you get, get an, an hour. hour. Okay, 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 lock okay. In, yeah. Dude, you could do it. <laughs> you could do it. If you knew you had an hour to cook a super goats and you didn't go on the stream... I would get in the fucking lab. Uh, you could do it, dude. Pop an Addy and just craft, <laughs> yes. craft the just master. Craft. <laughs> um, VGK beats the Oilers in a game that was always going to go over. Sword. But are we going to talk about that the Oilers might just not be good and they might just be the same team from last year that's doing the same shit? They like squeak out of the first round and then they meet a team in the second round and the games go over every time, but they get their shit pimped. Yeah, I mean, they've been fraudulent all year. It's nothing really new. I think the series is going to go seven games. Uh, they're both really good teams. But the line yesterday, just, I don't know. It's something about VGK being at home. Game one of the series, that place is fucking rocking. Oilers can't hold the lead. It's going to be a great series. I think the Oilers still prevail, but it's going to go game seven, and it's going to be a battle. But it's, again, as the point I was making, I think, two episodes ago, you can't win hockey games with one guy. Like no. one guy can't take over a game. Dry Saddle scores four goals. You can't win in hockey unless the team's playing well. I mean, we've seen back to back nights. Two guys have four goals apiece, and both those lose. teams lose. It's crazy. And when is Connor McDavid going to step up? Yeah. It's been dry title all playoffs. But every time you bet on the Oilers, and I'm just saying this like generally, not you specifically, but every time as a person you bet on the Oilers, you go, all right, McDavid's going to carry me through. When is he going to step up? Dry title can't do it all. And he shouldn't have to do it all. You shouldn't have to score four goals in a hockey game as like the second best player on your team. Yeah, no. I mean, kind of getting set up by McDavid. McDavid's being more of a facilitator than he is being the Jesus puck ripper that he is, which I don't know why, but dry styles always seems to be there to rip puck from McDavid. And I'm sure the game gets hard when you're Connor McDavid because everyone's scheming for you. The whole yeah. scheme is to stop yeah. you from doing what you're doing. And the fact that, you know, people on his line are still scoring four goals is absurd. But I mean, if you want to win this series, hey, it's got to come through him, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, again, VGK is kind of like the Kraken, you know? By committee. I fucking love the Kraken, dude. I know. Like, I'm in love with the Kraken. I don't know what they have to do to show people or to get them to take them seriously. I mean, they beat the Avs, which is enough for me, honestly. As soon as they beat the Avs, I hopped on the Kraken wagon. And then everybody on Stars on Monday or whatever day that was, everyone was on Stars. I go on picket. It, it's like 95 to 5% on Stars. I'm like, Everyone's gonna be a moose shit after the crack and steal coin, and they steal coin, dude. Like I took the plus one and a half because the stars it, don't blow dude, teams out. It felt so good sitting there at the game, four two lead. I'm like, wow, dude, this is the first time I've ever been on the right side of the crack and stealing coin. <laughs> like I've never bet on the crack and ever. Mm -hmm. I never do. Uh, but it was just like, wow. I I just like had a gut call, had to trust it. Took the Kraken, knowing that I was going to be in shit at this game if they didn't win, and they came through. It just felt really good. Mm. And, dude, I, I will for sure. I mean, this episode's going to come out on Friday. We're filming on Thursday. But I'll take the Kraken plus one and a half whenever they give it to me because the Stars don't blow teams out. They really don't. Imagine a expansion team Western Conference final. That'd be sick. That would be so sick. That'd be so Kraken Knights. Sick. That'd be so sick, dude. <laughs> But that too, and then also the narrative of the stars losing overtime is it, auto. We said it like four episodes since I we know. started filming that when it goes to overtime, the stars will lose. Yeah. Every time. It's automatic. Like and literally I've, every time. Every game I've gone to, they've lost an OT. And so. you're finally on the right side. And you're going. 
Yeah, I know. It's finally on the right side. Yeah, we're going tonight. Yeah. So. I'm looking forward to it. I'm taking the Kraken. I already texted Chelly. I was like, Kraken. The game already went no T. Stars might have won, <laughs> though, but the game already went no T. I'm just going to take the Kraken plus one and a half. Yeah. This is a free bet. And you're good. It's a free bet, dude. Um, the Devils got their shit smacked. Smacked. Saw it coming the minute I made a video. Smacked. Saw it coming. Every time I've made a video on TikTok and taken the Devils, they've lost 5 1. That suit was kind of fire. Suit was fire. Business trip. Where'd that come from? Um, well, I, I wanted. I was doing this whole skit, so I wanted to put the suit on um, for the skit that I was doing. And then I finished filming the skit, and I was like, oh, if I didn't put out like a pick for today. But I was like, the Devils, like game one, no way they get blown out again. Like Carolina's missing a bunch of dudes. Like we're feeling hot. And uh, got their dicks punched off. Yeah. Again, we come out flat game one. I don't know what it is. I mean, I get, you know, you just had a seven-game series battle. But you, we just can't keep coming out flat like that. It looks so bad. And yeah. Obviously, it's a seven-game series. Like you never know what's going to happen. We could come out and win tomorrow, or do what we did against the Rangers, and you know, lose the first two games, win the next two games. Um, but I mean, we just can't come out that flat. And I don't know when. I mean, that that has to be a conversation in the locker room. Like, there's no way we just came out that flat. I don't know if you watched the game. Yeah. I watched the first period and knew it was over. We looked. We had no shots in the first period. One. One shot. Like, that's incredible. That's really bad. That is awful. Like, like, you can't come out flatter than that and have one. Like, that's impressive. Imagine with a ticket in your back pocket. I don't know who the goalie is. Anderson. Anderson undersaves. And you one get save. one shot in the first. Oh, my God. You're already Unsaved, talked. Undersaved, dude. You're already talked. And, of course, again, the line movement. The devil started at plus 115. I got them at plus 100. They moved down to minus 110 even by puck drop. I saw minus 120. Yeah. And we fucking lose I by mean, four. Carolina's arena is arguably the the best atmosphere in hockey. Would love to go check it out sometime. We should have known, man. Game one at home. I know, dude. The Devils coming out flat every goddamn game. But I game thought one. we looked so good away from home. Yeah. Against New York, other than the game six, which we always knew we were like Carolina. Lose. I, I don't. I've never been to the Hurricanes Stadium, but from what I hear, it's it's crazier than MSG. But I feel like it doesn't get much worse than that. The Devils probably keep a close game, too. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get much worse than no. one shot in a period, No, dude. it does not. Like, that is atrocious, dude. And I don't even blame it on Schmidt, either. Like, I don't want that situation to change. Like, he had a great series in New York. Like, I don't want him to get pulled. Because we just... Every level of the game, we looked awful, dude. Yeah. Our power plays looked fucking horrendous. Like, we just looked awful. But I won't be betting on them. I know my job now. We'll not be betting on the Devils. Yep. So we'll win the playoff series. You don't need to. I'm not betting on the Leafs until I go to the game. I'm going to Toronto a week from today. That's exciting. I'm actually looking forward to hearing about that trip. I've always wanted to go to Toronto, but you guys have like a sick little fucking trip plan. I just hope they don't lose I, while you're there. I know. Because that would be soul-sucking. I know. Soul-sucking for sure. Because I, I have to say it, dude. Not that I'm like a big hockey guy. The Leafs are just not good. They're <laughs> I bet on them money line against the Panthers and I watched that game like it was one of the like I watched that full game. The Leafs are just not good. Like the first of all, I love the way the Panthers play. They just fucking rip. They just rip. The shot. Panthers are really good. Like people forget that they won the President's Trophy, I believe, last year. Like they're they got fucking guys. They just were under underperforming tremendously uh, in the middle of the tail end of this season. But they have every right to be in the playoffs. They deserve to be there. They deserve to be a way lower seed than they are at eight. They squeaked in somehow. Uh, but they're really good. You know, like anyone saying that this is a huge upset, they they should be here. Like they are that good. They've got Barkov, Verhage. They've got Ekblad. They've got Kachuk. They've got so many puck rippers. Like any of those guys would be the best player on their team elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, so the Leafs, though, they got to fucking step up, man. They have to. But, dude, I have to say, I love the way the Panthers play hockey. It makes you want to bet on them. Dude, they just play. It's like heavy metal. It's like yeah. watching. Um, my favorite sport is is soccer. Like, that's the sport that I love watching. I'll bet on it sometimes, but it's one of the sports where I can just watch without having any money on it. Um, and just, like, because I love the game. 
And when Liverpool first hired this manager called Jurgen Klopp, he plays this style of football called they just called heavy metal because he just high presses the whole game. When you, when you turn the ball over, it's a two man press to whoever you turn the ball over, and it's just constant. Like you'll get caught out, but it's so hard to deal with a high pressure because we press you to your own box. Sounds dude. Like the watching the Panthers play was literally. I was watching it. and I was like, this is like watching. It's just hot. it's heavy metal, dude. It's get the puck, fucking rush shot, rush shot, rush shot, high press. I like there was never a moment where I feel like the Leafs even had a leg in the game where they could mm-hmm. like stand on and be like, all right, let's take a minute. Like the minute a Leafs guy has the puck, it's fucking like well, two Panthers jerseys. And then the minute the Panthers have the puck, it's pass, pass, rip. And they're not like good shots. Yeah. But it's just fucking like volume, 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 dude. It's it's fun to watch them play because it's got to be hard to play against. For sure. And that's why when they score the first goal, like. I lose all faith and confidence in Leafs mm. winning that game because if the Leafs don't score first, bro, I feel like they like they're they're caught chasing the entire game. Then they slack on D, and then they're down two now. And now you're like, fuck, man. And then Panthers are still ripping puck, and it's like pulling teeth to get the Leafs to even possess the puck. Because dude, I was about to say the hardest thing to do when you're playing against that style of like offensive play because it's just all offensive play. There's really no defensive yeah. scheme. I feel like when you play hockey or or even soccer like that and just speaking from the Liverpool experience the minute you get one it's like you're playing against a wounded dog yep and it just gets the problems compile because now you're down one and you're trying to take risks but the way that they're playing hockey is so fast that it's like now we have you exactly where we want you you know what I mean? Exactly. it's like you got that first shot on a beer now it's like you're you're going down because I got the first goal but the flip side is if you get scored against first, it gets way harder. Yeah. Because now it's like, it's easy to sit back against that when you don't have to press it. Because you can kind of sit back. They're not taking high quality shots. Yeah. But you can sit back and kind of play your game and they're going to be taking more risks now. And it feels like if the Panthers get that first one, I totally agree. That's what literally happens with Liverpool. When they play that style and they get that first goal, we're scoring three. Yeah. Because it's a wounded dog now. Like you, you have to now play offensive. You have to push us and you can't push us like that. And that's what it feels like watching the Panthers play. And I... Holding a Leafs ticket sucked like the worst, but watching the Panthers play, I was like, this team is super fun to watch. No, they're really good. They're really good. The series is gonna be, it's gonna be a grind for, for Leafs fans everywhere, man. No, yeah, this is gonna be a war. Like yeah. you're gonna leave wounded. Mm. Like it's one of those. It's one of those series though where I feel. You leave wounded, but it's like a battle tested a little bit. Like you're you're leaving licking your wounds if you win that series. Yeah. But you leave going, holy shit, like, we're good, though. You know, like, that's when you can recover from. Yeah, I mean, the Leafs got to win at least one or else there won't be a game five and I won't be in Toronto. So just get no, one. No, they'll win one. Just get one. They'll win one. They're minus 205 tonight, which is disgusting. The books love the Leafs, man. It's crazy. Like, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about them, but they are always heavy, heavy favorites in mm-hmm. any situation. It's insane. And they have the heaviest juice lines in the regular season, I swear. Like, they, them, the Avs, and the Oilers will be minus 600. But, like, nobody else will, you know? True. But, like, no matter what, Leafs are going to be heavy favorite juice. I don't know what it is about the Leafs, but the books just love them. True. Um, We've got some games that are going to be played on Friday when this episode drops. Let's talk about them. Devils-Hurricanes game two. Carolina, after beating our dicks off, it's still only minus 115. Obviously, I will not be betting on the Devils, but I wouldn't be shocked if we steal that game and or go over our team total of two and a half. Because we're a bounce back team. I think that's the one thing that I love about our team is that it, you know, we can lose two at home to the Rangers and still come back and win two in New York. Like, we can come out flat and I feel like we respond really well. So I wouldn't be shocked if we if we stole one or at least went over our team total of two and a half goals because there's no way we only score one goal. Again. Yeah, dude, doesn't it get tiring of just seeing the same, same, same matchups? Like when ser- when ga- when series get deep into the series, it's like, bro, I'm tired of betting on these two teams. I love it. You do? I love it because the because it's gonna get better as they go. Once you get to game five, six, and seven, like it is gonna be the best game you've watched till the next game five, six, or seven. Yeah, it's like wine. The first four games I think are so boring. I really want nothing to do with them because it really like obviously they matter, but they don't. Because yeah. once you get to game five, six, and seven, now shit starts mattering, and now it's like all right, like 
I actually hate when new series start. Yeah, I can. Like, I hate game ones, twos, and threes. I think those are like the worst. Yeah, unless you have like a three zero lead, and then you're like, all right, well, game Facts. four could be exciting. No, you're right. You're but, right. But um, we also have two NBA games on Friday. Wow, I shouldn't have reacted. <laughs> the Celtics going to Philly. Do you want to guess the spread? Into Philly. Ooh. Celtics minus two and a half. Minus one and a half. How'd you know wow. they're going to be favorite? I'm taking the Sixers with my mortgage. Wow. With everything I have, I'm taking the Sixers. Why? Because you're back in Philly, dude. Do you know how hard it is to play in Philly? It's, yeah, really hard. With Embiid after having a bot game, like he's going to come back to Philly and drop like 40 and 40. That's an interesting spread. That's incredible. I wouldn't say the Sixers are a lock. Nah, well, I never say that word. <laughs> But I would say but they I'm might be the they might be I'm, air. I just need to I need to feel it out. I need to feel it out. See what people are saying. The, the money splits are looking like dude. That shit like is really important actually. If you if you're uh, into that type of stuff, looking at the money splits, it, it does speak some volumes. Okay, but tell me how that spread doesn't make sense, but this one does. Nuggets play the Suns in Phoenix. Gets the spread. Nuggets are playing the Suns in Phoenix. Mm hmm. Suns minus two and a half. After dropping their nuts <laughs> on the Suns chin for two games straight, the Suns are minus four. Wow. I'm kind of sharp. My, yeah, that was I can't believe you picked both. Of it. Like that's <laughs> incredible. How do those lines make sense? The Celtics get blown out game one, blow out the Sixers game two and are favorited. The Nuggets blow out the Suns in two games straight and are underdogs. How does that make sense? How do how do those lines make sense? Give me the Nuggets and the fucking Sixers. Give me them both. You think the Nuggets are going to go 3-0? Yeah, going in this? it, dude. It doesn't. We already talked about it, and you already said it, and that's the reason why. Going back to Phoenix doesn't – you're not going to get more depth just because you're playing in Phoenix. Yeah. But and that's got, why you're going to lose games. But home court is, like, is so important. You got the city behind you. You got where you're used to playing. You don't have the elevation. Four which is points, though. Four points. I, I thought two and a half was, was – the right line four seems odd four. four tells me that fuck dude four tells me that they really think coming out of the altitude being back in phoenix that like the suns are going to be the suns again yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm feeling too like that's incredible dude. yeah like you're kidding i mean to beat a team like and chris that, paul is a game time decision by to the way beat a team three times in a row is hard enough to beat kevin durant three times in a row after botting for two games He's kind of bought it. We, we've talked about it, though. It's like, KD's not KD on this team, though. No, he's not. He's not. But it's still fucking Kevin Durant on the floor, and you got Devin Booker in demon mode. De Booker in demon mode on the road was the reason they were even remotely even close in those games. Now he's back home. I'm telling you, Suns are going to win that game. But Jokic is still going to eat on little baby Aiden. For sure. But the Suns win that game. I don't know about Celtic Sixers. I haven't I'm taking the Sixers and the Nuggets. Fuck Suns it. ain't going down three nothing. But I'll take Suns props. Suns but I'm props. taking the I'm taking four points, dude. I'm tired, dude. I'm tired of looking like a fucking. You got to pick the spots. Bozo. Like, dude. were you on the Sixers last night? I hope no. not. Yeah. But I'm tired of looking like a bozo and going. Trusting, I'm tired of trusting favorites. This like the cold streak I went on before I started to get a little bit hot these past couple days has taught me that I'm just tired of trusting Vegas because Vegas wants you to lose your money either way. I'm tired of trusting Vegas. Just saying, blindly being like, the Suns are minus four. That tells me the Suns are coming out. Like, no, fuck that, dude. Like, I'm just going to look at games and pick my side. And especially in the playoffs, I'm not taking the Bucks minus eight and a half against the Heat. I'm not taking the Knicks minus six against but the Heat. But do you think the Nuggets are going to win? They might. I not? might just take Nuggets money line. You should because... Again, the trend of teams covering, or winning. I could just take the insurance with four points, and like, let's say the Suns like happen with that, the it, Sixers, and the Nuggets are up one, and Booker hits a three, and now I lose by two, and I didn't just take four. I mean, how often does that happen? Pretty yeah. often in the playoffs. I Not as right. often as you would think, especially um, this postseason. I did want to talk about one series, and it it takes place on Saturday. The Knicks go into Miami. I'm not going to make you guess the spread. Um, I can guess it. Okay, go ahead. Knicks going into Miami. Miami at home. Knicks are going into Miami. Game three. Miami at home. What's the series? 1-1? One, 1-1. One. One, one. 
Knicks minus three. Miami minus three. Wow. Dude, guess that line. That guy's sharp as hell. Damn it. But I didn't want to talk about this because our next episode won't come out till Monday and we're not going to be able to talk about this game. Um, might be my first time betting on the Heat all playoffs. Even though I'm really rooting for the Knicks, I really like they're my playoff team in the NBA right now. But dude, seeing Jimmy Butler on the bench, Jimmy Butler, <laughs> like perp, like you could tell the minute that game started, like when they showed him on camera, he could have played that game. And it was a conversation between him and Spo going, we can drop this, dude. We're going back to Miami. Like you stole the game we needed to steal. We're going back. Just like sit out and let me like do what I do. Eating popcorn, loving hearing like these Knicks fans like shit on the heat, like get behind the Knicks. And then just sitting there at the end of the game, like while the Knicks fans are going crazy, by the way, you just beat the heat without Jimmy Butler. Like who gives a rats? And just hearing like that stadium go crazy and just having him sit there being like, like he's going to come out in Miami and it's going to be dangerous. It's yeah. going to be real, real dangerous for the Knicks. And that's what scares me. Yeah. Is because Julius Randle back, no Jimmy Butler, and the Knicks still had to squeak one out. Yeah. So now we're back in Miami. I don't know if I'll take the spread, but that money line, I'm not even kidding, might be air. I like it. I don't think he loses in Miami, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know why I thought the Knicks would be favored. Of course, fucking Heat are going to be favored going back home with Jimmy coming back. Yeah. And now he's going to be fully healthy, too, right? Now it's like, all right, we gave you a couple fucking days now, dude. Yeah. Like you're going to have to be good to go. Um, no, yeah, but those will be the only games that happen. I mean, we can talk about the Saturday NHL game. It's Oilers Knights. Do you know what you're going to do in that game yet? I don't know. I'm off. I'm off. I'm going to take the over again. Over is probably a good bet. Both goalies didn't look great. No. Um, I'm off the Oilers, bro. I know Shelly needs them to win the cup, rooting for them. But I gave him one chance. I said, if they lose this fucking game, I'm off. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm on Kraken. I'm on VGK. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to be picking my spot. I'm not going to be betting every single playoff game there is, both on the ice and on the hardwood. I'm going to be picking my spots, though. Yeah. Like last night, I wish I just stayed off. I had five straight bets. Celtics minus eight. Angels. Um, Rockies was a 10-unit Mega Max. And they Insane. won fucking 8-0. Uh, and then I go Devils and Oilers. Just fucking lost me money. Devils, I should have known, dude. Yeah. I should have known we were going to come out flat. It's yeah. like a young team. You just finished a Game 7 series. You got to go up to Carolina. I was never going to be the fucking yeah. Devils. Yeah, no. no. I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, tentatively, I'm going the over in the Knights game. I'm probably going to take the Devils team total over, but I won't bet on the Devils. Um I'm definitely going Sixers. I'm probably going to go Nuggets. That's the only game that I might change if I can like hear a good pitch on the Suns. Um, and then I'm for sure probably going to go Heat, money line, and then you know Warriors, Lakers games one. There's no spread out yet. That series is one zero. Probably you know we probably want to take the Warriors with the points in that. Lake one. Show, man, they look know. good. No fuck, dude, they know. look good. I don't know, dude. I don't how about know. how about those rebounds the other day from Looney and fucking Davis combined Nuts. for forty nine rebounds? That's insane. I know. And some dude came on stream, gave me had the audacity to give me Looney under rebounds. Shit, bet. What? Because it was such a green gob on Prize Picks. Like it was, it, it was a green gob like I've never seen before. <laughs> He's hit every single game. His line was twelve and a half. He's <laughs> averaging like seventeen. Yeah. And it was like game one against AD. Like, we thought AD was going to, you know, lock him up. No. We should have known when AD's points and rebounds was at 40 and a half that he was going to have a great game. Yeah. That's an absurd combo. Yeah. That's 20 and 20. The same kid who gave me Stetson Bennett to knock you trapped and gave me loony rebounds. All right, well, we're fading him. Yeah, he's auto fade. Next guy, next time he comes on, you actually need to tell me. We've been, we've been fading some people on stream, bro, and it's been automatic. <laughs> Like, if you come in and start chirping somebody or, like, hyping up your record, it's automatic. Whatever's about to come out of your I'm mouth. I'm 6-1 in my last seven, <laughs> and this one is my favorite. You're literally losing that yeah, bet that a thousand bet times. that just lost. <laughs> and, like, we've been, we got this guy, dude, this guy manages a whole spread. I could tell you what bet you gave out on the surgical stream on September 8th of last year. That's sick. Like, unbelievable data tracking on the surgical stream. Which makes it easy for me to know, like, who's giving me shit plays, who's getting hot. Uh, but the last few days, like, been like 41% on stream, fucking bad. So I was like, dude, I got to just start fading some of these plays, man. Yeah, dude. 
because I never hear any unders. I was thinking about this on Night Sweats last night. Like, I kind of, I know you're going to fucking disagree with this completely because you're fucking Mikey Overs. But I kind of wish unders were the overs. Because <laughs> when you, what, dude? let me elaborate. When you go on prize, you wake up, you go to prize picks. The first thing you're thinking about, who's going over? When really, I would love to see nightly, like, after games are all over, it's 11 o'clock at night. All the squares we've had all day to look at, I wish we could see the results of all those squares, which ones were green or red. I promise you, the board would be filled with red, meaning guys going under. Mm. Because on stream, I listen to a 50 fucking props a day. People sell me on this guy to go over, this guy to go over. It's like, are we just expecting fucking every athlete to do their job today and do it well enough to go over their average? Like, no, dude. And so I'm not a big under better, but like the rare times that I do take unders, they hit more than they don't. And I feel like if overs or if unders were the overs, the surgical stream would have way more green. That's fucking disgusting. 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 It's disgusting. But like right? there were fucking the entire floor in the Celtics game last night went under their props. But again, this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying I think everyone thinks I get mad when someone takes an under. I just won't do it. I don't think it's yeah, fun. Yeah. When I bet, I want to have fun. I think that's why I got into betting because I think betting should be fun. Um, it's obviously, you know, can be a great way to make money. It's an amazing way to lose a lot of money. But when I bet, I'd rather have fun. So I'm not going to take an under and like wish on this guy's downfall and be like, Mr. Three, unless it's like Dylan Brooks. I, he might be the first under I ever take. <laughs> like that literally might be the guy I first under I ever take unless he's on the Shanghai Sharks. But like, again, I've said it before. The over is the harder bet to it pick. Because you're, you're not winning until you are. Whereas with the under, you're winning the entire time until you're not. No, it's the hardest bet to pick because they have to, they have to be perfect that game. They yeah. have to be perfect that game to hit their over because it's their average. And you think about it, like if your test score is an 85, it's hard for you to get over an 85, right? So it's like they have to be perfect that game, which is why I like rooting for Because when they're on, it's like electric. They're nailing shots. Like, let's fucking go. No, no doubt it's electric. But is it making you coin? I mean, for me, yeah, because I've never taken an under. But like, I, again, I saw an interview with Kobe Bryant and they were like, what's, what is, rest in peace, what is the least amount of sleep you've played a game on. And he said, no sleep. Because one of his daughters had something wrong with her in the hospital. He had to go to the hospital all night. And then he didn't get to sleep in the morning because she was still struggling. And then he had to show up to the game and play. And he was like, I didn't tell my teammates. I didn't tell my coaches. I didn't tell the fans. They don't need to fucking know. I just had to show up and perform. Obviously, a whole different mindset, right? But you don't know that when you bet on Kobe that he hasn't gotten a lick of sleep that night when you take his over. So that's why I've said the over is the harder bet because you're betting on a human to play perfect. And you probably have more bad days than you do out of seven days a week. And you're probably going to have more bad games than you do good games in the entire season. So it's harder to bet the over on, a, on player props. A thousand percent. That's not even a question. But it's more fun to bet the over, which is why when everyone opens their book, they'd rather go who's going over. Because you want to watch someone that you like go over. That's what like, I think that all comes from. You don't want to watch someone you like go under. That's like boring as shit. It is boring. It's certainly boring. But... Not everyone's going. Up. Not every fucking athlete in every single game that's being played is going to have guys that go over. I mean, of course, that's the name you of the know? game, you know. So, so I mean, I, I just feel like if we people who come on stream every now and then sprinkle in an under, might see some success. Sprink in and under. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's wrap the show with the go to the week really quick. Um, it's coming out at this this episode drops on Friday, so the go to the week is someone in your life, either personal or betting wise, that has you know really goaded up for you. Um, this week, uh, I'll start it off. My go to the week. I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of an odd answer because I feel like I want to go teams, but I feel like the go to the week should be a specific person. So I'm gonna go. My go to the week is Charles Barkley. I feel like he always comes with the funniest shit I've ever seen on the internet, and I normally always agree with his takes he's like the only guy that i normally always agree with the takes of um and i feel like now that the nba playoffs is kind of in the thick of it his content has just been amazing on the show um 
and I just I've always loved Chuck. Like my dad and I've always loved Chuck, uh, and uh, he's just my go to the week. Every time I see a clip on TikTok or I'm watching the game on TNT and he's on, like he's always making me giggle. Like yeah. he's always got some dumb shit to say, or he's got some shit that everyone disagrees with, but that I agree with. So it's like I just go to the week. Charles Barkley. I fuck with Charles Barkley. He's I love that show. It's so makes, good, dude. It actually makes the NBA playoffs so much better. It does, dude. My go to the week. I'm gonna stick stick with a the theme I did on the last episode with a goat whale. Mookie Betts, wow, reviving himself in the goat whale, back to back three hit nights this week, wow, and then a hit last night. So he's got a little hit streak going, and uh, he was nowhere close to his line. He is now projected to go over his line. So let's go, Mookie. Way to revive the goat whale, man. Really, really big week. I mean, I'm sitting here sweating the goat whale as if like there's not six more months of baseball, you know. So once we get to the dog days, man. You know, June, July, August of of summer. It's going to be so crucial for the goat whale. But Mookie's back on the table. We need Jose Ramirez, man. I want I want to be on this couch next week. Say Jose Ramirez is my go of the week because he is not bringing in the runs. But uh, we got to step it up, Jose. But Mookie, do your job. You've been killing it. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I've chalked my goat whale. Luis Castillo and Sandy are throwing turkeys every night, and Tim and Corey are injured, so. <laughs> That's an awful way to Damn, start. Dude, that's tough. Nick, go yeah, to the week. Go to the week. I think this week it's kind of awkward because they didn't win their games. But Joe Pavelski and uh, and Leon Drysaddle both with four goal games in the playoffs. I mean, just incredible. Absolutely showing up, and your team uh, does not win either one of those. So that's terribly tough. But you know, Kraken and VGK. I think we're probably rooting for. Sorry, Chelly, because that'd be way more fun to see in the final. Kraken, way more fun. Yeah, I would so love that. Yeah, I would literally, literally love that so much. Especially the Kraken, dude. Like, I would ride them so yeah. hard. I'd be like, let's go! Yeah. Other than the Devils. Other than Carolina. Future. Time. Okay. Um, no, yeah. Alright, well, those are our go to the week. This has been another episode of TFM Bets. Remember, you can get this podcast wherever you get podcasts. That's Apple Podcasts. That's Spotify. And that's the YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, Trent, tell them where they can find you. Follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. I book it with Trent and tune into the to the Twitch stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Central. Channel is Book It Sports. Uh, you can find me over at Mikey over on Instagram. It's michael.j.overs. Um, and we will, in fact, we'll be seeing. Appreciate you guys.